Hey, I'm Christopher Blevins. This is my new favorite bike, and I'm here with Specialized University to show you how to set up the rear shock suspension on the new Epic World Cup. The Epic World Cup is a momentum carrying machine. It features a groundbreaking rear shock that enables control of the positive and negative air spring relationship. This allows us to finely tune how and when our suspension activates on any race course or trail. The rear shock is really the highlight of this bike. It feels like a hundred mil suspension or more when you need it to, but when you're sprinting, when you're climbing, it feels just like a hardtail. It's been fun being a little bit involved in the process of this bike and the idea was brought up. I didn't really think a lot of things were possible. The engineers had kind of these paradoxical things that they were trying to work through. How do you make it better at descending but have less travel? How do you make less travel feel like more travel? How do you have stiffness but also suppleness? And they took those challenging questions. They used their big brains to come up with something amazing. And I think we have a pretty rad final product out of it. Before diving in, you'll need a shock pump and a four millimeter Allen key. A tape measure is also nice to help dial and sag. You'll need to be familiar with where the negative pressure release button is, where the positive air spring valve is, and where the rebound and compression dials are. To get an initial feel for the process, I'll go over three initial setups. A soft setup with a most sag and active suspension, a middle ground setup that offers a happy medium of both compliance and efficiency, and then a race-oriented firm setup that pedals like a hardtail with compliance only when you hit the big bumps and when it's demanded. Rebound and compression are also important. I leave the compression fully open unless the course requires more pedaling support, something like a short track where you really want that hard platform under you. But rebound is dependent on your body weight and air pressure. Here's a chart to give you a good starting point. Okay, so the softest setting, this is gonna feel most like a traditional XC bike. It's really soft and supple off the top, and it's really the best setting for the technical roots and rocks that you're pedaling over throughout a race or a ride. Begin by letting out the air from the shock and compressing it to a full bottom out. Hold the shock at bottom out while using the four millimeter to press the negative pressure release button for a couple of seconds. You finish up by airing the shock up to your preferred riding pressure, aiming for around four millimeters of sag. All right, so here's your middle setting. This is a good starting point for a traditional modern XCO course that has a bit of everything. You'll get that kind of hardtail feel, stiffness when you're climbing or sprinting, but you'll also have some light, supple suspension off the top and then plenty of compliance when you hit the big drops on course. Begin by letting the air out of the shock. Then compress the shock, stopping at the midpoint line. Hold the shock here and press the negative pressure release button for a couple of seconds. Then finish up by airing the shock to your recommended riding pressure you need less pressure to achieve the recommended two to three millimeter of sag here. I go around five to eight PSI less. All right, so now we are in the firmest setting. I already mentioned how good the top end is when it's in the softer settings. So the fact that this pedals like a hardtail is really incredible. You get the stiffness, the direct power transfer that we all like from hardtails, but when you hit technical features, it breaks through and you have plenty of compliance. I talked to the engineers about how we can have the best of both worlds. And it's pretty impressive that they accomplished it here. I think this is the ideal setup for short track racing, which is the discipline I love the most, and also those fast, smooth courses. Begin with a shock aired up to your preferred riding pressure. You'll end up running even less pressure in this setup compared to the other two. Then press the negative pressure release button again, purging all the air this time from the negative air chamber. And then you end up with no sag in a suspension platform that activates only when the course absolutely demands it. So these three setups should be considered as your starting points, but you really have an infinite amount of options and settings to your personal preferences. Play with it as much as you want. I'm definitely going to do that when I'm pre-riding a World Cup course. It's really impressive that they were able to not compromise on anything and just improve the bike overall. All right, if you have any issues, contact Rider Care or head over to the good people at your local specialized dealer, and they'll be happy to help you dial in your new Epic World Cup.